I think what is commonly called like individualization, so that everybody is left to him or herself and to, uh, has to somehow forge his or her own fortune and happiness and uh, religion and, and yoga and wellness program. I think uh, there's, there are two connected problems to this position. The first is a political problem that also state that politics addresses the individual only as a vulnerable individual. Uh, your feelings could be hurt by dirty jokes or by uh, something that goes against your religious conviction or whatever. Um, so the state more and more imposes prohibition in order to uh, protect your sensitive feelings. But this means the state treats individuals as if their sensitivity were the best part of them. And it means also that the state treats the individual as children. So you are not able to overcome your sensitivity. So the, the sensitivity is sacred, it has to be protected as any, at any price. But this is not the way how a state can address citizens as political citizens. Because this presupposes that these are adult people and they should be treated as adult people. And uh, this means that the state should interpolate them in a way that says, you are an adult person, you will not die when you smell a cigarette and you will not die when you're here a nasty joke. You can stand that. That's an adult interpretation. And I think postmodernist states do precisely the opposite. When they warn you that smoking is dangerous, they talk to you like, uh, like a nanny to a child. Because we all know that smoking is dangerous, and if we hadn't known that, we would never have smoked a cigarette. This is what we could call postmodern pseudo-politics at the very moment where the state or transnational uh, formations are not anymore powerful enough or willing to stop the powerful agents that threaten the life of people and have made millions of young people workless and unemployed now. At this very moment, the same state starts to play a different role and starts to protect us from, from other things, but by prohibiting things. And this state, which does not anymore support citizens by giving them uh, infrastructure, pension, social security, education, uh, this state starts to demand something from the citizens, which is its health. And they uh, demand it by prohibiting things which could threaten our health. And the paradox is, of course, that one thing replaces the other. It's not additional, or at least they do something, but it is a replacement for the other activity, what state and politics should be there. And the extreme examples are like, for example, a friend of mine just returned from Colombia in South America, and there three millions of people are without clean water, but the state does not change that, but prohibits smoking. And I think we are in a similar situation instead of protecting us from the irrational movements of financial capital and uh, preventing us from becoming unemployed, the state prevents us from smoking. And I think this is infamous and we should really fight politicians for that.